Please join me in welcoming Sir Harold Evans and Miss Peggy Noonan. Do you think, as you look at the Julian Assange and WikiLeaks case, that the fact that we live in a computerized world that because of our anti-terrorist activities and the anti-terrorist activities of the West in general, information has to be shared. It has to be shared through the internet, through various portals, et cetera. That means it exists, it is out there. Once it exists and is out there, there will always be someone who can come along, take all of that information, download it, and expose whatever's been said. Do you think in the end that means ultimately two things? One is not that governments will get better, but that they will become less forthcoming even within themselves, with agencies speaking less to agencies and principles speaking less to principles. So that Assange may idealistically want a, a more transparent and open uh, uh, governmental reality, but in the end, the implication of his work is that it will be less open, less transparent, and less available to the people of each country. I hope that was clear enough. Yes, was it's it? clear. All well, right. I tell you, I, 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 I've argued, I would have published these documents, but I would have, I would have edited them very carefully. The New York Times did a very good job in not revealing identities of people who might get bumped off. You think the Times did a good I job in their own editing? I yes, in their own I, redacting? I think the New York Times did a good redacting job. What yeah. I'm critical of is Assange, who didn't, and other newspapers around the world which didn't. Yes. Because I do so believe... So it'll be out there. Whatever was redacted you, will be found. You have to be responsible. If, I'm, if you're in journalism, you have certain pretensions, and I think... But you do believe the, the New York Times was being a responsible citizen in reporting the documents. Well, two answers to that. First of all, quite a, a, a very significant number of New York Times readers did not. I spoke to the editor Did the not time. think they were yeah, at, the I, Times I, was acting as a responsible the citizen. The overwhelming flood of comment initially was very hostile to the Times, saying yes. what right are you, an unelected editor, to decide what shall be secret or not? And now the tide has swung the other way somewhat, but I think the general as far as I can define it, and you better, I've checked on the Beast comment too, I think the general thing is uh, highly critical, but swinging somewhat to saying, I mean, a lot of the comments are very paranoid, saying, thank God we're seeing how evil our government is. Yeah. Which I think is an exaggeration. I think all but you, Harry, if you had been l uh, editor today of, the, of London Sunday Times, do you think you would have printed? I would have done it like, like the New York Times did. In the way that the New York Times did I, by redacting. I wouldn't redacting. have done it like some other papers did. By the way, in talking about transparency, it's quite amusing that Mr. Assange and his colleagues remain secret and anonymous. So you can't, you know, they have it both ways, really. Yeah. They're quite prepared to destroy other people's uh, reputations and yes. possibly lives. And by the way, of course, what, those, what comes out, one thing you, does come out of Assange is how literate and and clever observers our diplomats are. I mean, they get the Soviet Union and they get Turkey absolutely right about the nature of, uh, of what Erdogan's like, about the nature of what, what they call Batman and Robin, Medvedev and Putin are. I mean, it's all quite fascinating. It's not gonna help. It's not gonna help. For Putin and Medvedev have ways of dealing with that, like, for instance, bumping off journalists in Moscow, which they yeah. do whenever anybody troubles them. Can a great we don't nation, can a great nation have a functioning diplomatic reality in the age of WikiLeaks? I think it can. I could argue the other way, I'd actually, that if you try and keep too much secret, it enhances the value of secrets that are disclosed. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, the more openness in government, the better, because in that case, if you conceal less, there's less to it explode under your face and people will feel more involved where you try and keep... I mean, the Vietnam War, the Pentagon Papers, it was just about the earlier section of the Vietnam War, but the Vietnam War had a huge number of divisions, lies and secrecy. So did the run-up to the Iraq War. And so I'm very much... That is the nature of government. It is populated by people with power. They will be stupid, ignorant, abusive, etc. That's it's why... It's still got to go forward. Right. So, it's so fascinating about how far an outsider, an irresponsible, unelected editor like me should go huh. 
to expose these things. All I can say is that I used to ask myself two questions when I was deciding. Many, many things came across my desk and with arguments against publishing them from authorities. And nine and point eight times out of 10, I, I published. But there were the point two times when I could see the potential of somebody being killed mm -hmm. or of enormous trouble coming, Ireland with one case, Northern Ireland, and it isn't published. Yeah. And I think that when we give ourselves pretensions in journalism, we have to remember this, that in a democracy like America and Britain, we are totally dependent on something, the rule of law. Yes. We're dependent on the protection of the state, which you don't have in the Soviet Union today, in Russia today, that if you practice your craft honorably, subject to the laws of the land, you can do it. But if you try and do that in Russia today, you're more likely to get killed. Mm -hmm. So the rule of law is important. And, and I, I'm not, in other words, I'm saying I'm not an anarchist and I'm not a nihilist. All right. Harry Evans, thank you very much. That was just wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. We have to go to questions now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have about 10 or 15 minutes here. If any of you have questions for, for Sir Harry, Come on up to the, uh, maybe you could just uh, stand here at the uh, microphone and one after another ask a question. Thanks, hi. Uh, my first, I have actually two quick questions. My first has to do with what you think about US News and World Report stopping print publication. Okay, And the second, second one has to do with, and, and I think Ms. Newman could quote me better, Edmund Morris on uh, Face the Nation last week speaking about how we <laughs> described Americans. Yes. And what do you think about that? Yes, Edmund Morris last week on Face the Nation uh, spoke as an immigrant to the United States who loves it, but, uh, but for some reason after saying that he loved it and was so glad to be here, he added the information that Americans themselves in his time here, perhaps the past quarter century, have grown large and lazy and obese, yes? So Harry, is that true? You've been an immigrant here. You became a citizen within the past decade. Have you seen us change and grow worse? I don't see any obese people here today. <laughs> um, Edmund Moist, I know very well, he's a marvelous writer. His biographies of Theodore Roosevelt are terrific. Uh, all immigrants like me are torn. First of all, they feel kind of guilty that they're, you know, uh, Dylan Thomas said it very well in a poem. He said, see the Englishman crossing America swizzling and guzzling his way while he condemns the Americans. Mm -hmm. well, this is very true. Many people come here and enjoy the, the what, before we had this appalling bank robbery of the financial meltdown, enjoying the life. So there's a certain guilt feeling which makes them think that though they're guests in the country, they have to criticize yeah. to redeem their conscience for a while they have a good time. So that's a very, I'm not saying Edmund is necessarily like that, but when they're appearing in public, they sometimes feel they have to be overcritical, in my yes. view. I mean, I, if, you, if you stir me up, I can find criticisms too, but by and large, I think we're damn lucky to be here. Uh, as for US News, sir, uh, I, it's a very fine magazine. It's just the economics of the day didn't justify uh, continuing it in print, although they're going to do the special editions. Uh, it had two million circulation. Now, well, because what I'm hoping is that my wife, when she edits Newsweek, will find a way of solving this problem. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll be on the begging bowl, st <coughs> on the street with the begging bowl. Mm 